Imagine living your life after 50 and feeling energized and excited about your future. Welcome to the Women in the Middle podcast, the podcast for women who are ready to figure out what they want and create the life they deserve. Here's your host and master certified life coach, Susie Rosenstein. Hey there, today's episode is an encore episode about the two-year anniversary of my book and the whole topic of celebrating more at this point in your life. Let's go. Welcome back to the podcast, Women in the Middle, with over a million downloads and counting. I'm your host, Susie Rosenstein, your Master Certified Coach and Midlife Mentor, and I'm so glad to be here with you again. But just quick, before we dive into this fun episode, I want to share my news about my upcoming podcast, Women in the Middle Entrepreneurs. I'm currently looking for guests too. So if you're a woman in the middle who's 50 plus and also an entrepreneur or business owner, this new podcast is especially for you. We'll be focusing on what the experience is really like to be over 50 and running a business. And I'm interested in talking to all kinds of business owners too, from solopreneurs and small businesses to those of you who might even have employees, bricks and mortar businesses too. Sound good? If you're interested in learning more about how to be a guest on this new show, head over to www.midlifeinterviews.com and apply. There's lots more information there so you can see if you're a good fit for this show. Okay, so as I mentioned, this episode is an encore episode, which means that's when I bring back a popular and useful episode And I thought it was a perfect time to talk about why it's such a great idea to focus on celebrating more when you're over 50, because it's the second year anniversary of my book, 50 Ways to Celebrate Life After 50, Get Unstuck, Avoid Regrets, and Live Your Best Life. Now, this book has a lot of fun aspects to it, including some personal stories, 30 journal prompts to help you dig a little deeper, and of course, 50 suggestions for ways to celebrate your life after 50. You can head over to Amazon or your favorite online bookseller to order your copy, or you can purchase and download a copy from my website. All of these links will be in the show notes. You know, one of the questions I ask my clients all the time is, are you having enough fun? It's such a simple question, but it really helps to put a spotlight on the whole topic of celebration. So many of you aren't having enough fun. I hear it all the time. And it's a really great idea to ask yourself why. The way you answer this little question will reveal your thoughts. Once you're clear on what you think, you can also decide if you like your reasons for thinking this or that. And if you aren't a happy camper with what you learn, you have the opportunity to practice thinking other things that will actually help you have the fun that you want to have in your life. But not being aware of it, you're not going to get at the bottom of it. So you got to do something. And that's what I suggest. I know you're going to love this episode. Lots more ideas, great perspective on what it means to celebrate more. Have fun with it and enjoy. I always knew I thought of myself as a glass is, you know, half full kind of gal. But now I see that my thoughts are the reason that I feel this way. It's the reasons I feel the way I do. It's become more and more obvious to me as a coach because I now challenge all kinds of personal beliefs and help other women do the same sort of challenging of their own on the path to being more intentional with their lives. Learning to think on purpose this way, it's the most beautiful gift you can give yourself, in my opinion. It's the gift that keeps on giving. This kind of thinking and thought work, it gave me the idea to take a closer look at the relevance of celebrating traditions in midlife. So back about 100 episodes or so ago... (laughs) I interviewed someone about why you should celebrate traditions in midlife. And that someone was my uncle. And the episode is episode 78, Why You Should Celebrate Traditions in Midlife with Bob Schneeweiss. It's also one of the few times that I've had a guy in as an honorary woman in the middle (laughs) on the podcast. Anyway, I've watched him over the years excel at the art of celebration. He is really good at it. He looks at all kinds of things as a reason to celebrate, to commemorate, to note in a more significant way. He sees small moments and larger type moments as celebration worthy. Why? Because it's fun. Because it makes you feel more alive and more grateful. Because it makes you laugh. Because it's meaningful. 
and because it helps focus on the present moment. You may have heard me talk about this before, but he has a cool New Year's tradition of identifying his top 10 days of the year every year. At the end of the year, he sits down and starts to reflect on the year and makes a list. And then when he confirms his list, he emails the people in his life who contributed to that top 10 day expressing gratitude. And he files the list away in his drawer. This stack of lists would probably make a great book. (laughs) And if this little idea wasn't cool enough, he shared a bit about what happens when he notices that he's on the brink of experiencing one of these special days. He used a word once to describe a bit of his process, and it really stuck with me. So he was talking about what happens when he realizes he's in the middle of actually experiencing a potential top 10 day of the year. Because of this regular tradition, he sensitized himself for awareness of what it feels like. And when he senses it, he actually makes a decision to amplify it. That right there is intentional celebration. Come on, can you imagine that? So after his interview, I was really thinking about it. And then it happened for me too. It was January, 2019. I was at a business retreat in Huntington Beach in Southern California and I planned to go on a whale watch the day before the retreat started. It was the first time I was meeting the other women in this mastermind, and I was ready to go on the whale watch alone, but I knew it would be more fun with a new friend, so I asked in our Facebook group if anybody wanted to join me. One of the women did, so we went ahead and zoned in on Newport Landing Whale Watch, and I figured out which time slot would work best, and that's when I noticed something really interesting. VIP seating. My eyes lit up. Better seats, better viewing, fewer people, closer to the captain and staff, sold. And away we went. And now remember, I'd never met Sessa, my soon-to-be whale-watching companion. We only knew each other online and on Zoom. We met at the hotel just after she got out of her taxi from the airport. To our surprise and delight, we were wearing the same color jacket, which was bright pink. We looked like twins, except she was about a foot taller than me. (laughs) We laughed about that too. We made our way to the boat and got settled in with our binoculars and our drinks. We took some selfies. We got to know each other. There was so much energy. We were gabbing nonstop. The sun was shining. We were heading out to sea and watching some sea lions frolicking about. It was beautiful. I was so happy completely enjoying my time with a totally fun new friend. And then I felt it. It was a tingle. It was an energetic tingle. It was palpable. I heard myself thinking that this was going to be a top 10 day. I could tell. I could absolutely tell. It reminded me of whitewater rafting in the Grand Canyon. There's a sound you hear. It's a feeling that you get when you're like approaching a big rapid. It's coming and you know it. You can't stop it. I had that kind of feeling. And then I remembered what my uncle shared about his personal practice of the art of celebration. He amplifies it. I got it. I understood what he meant. It's like capitalizing on the amazing. And I was all in. I made sure to experience it fully. I would be more present, ask the guides more questions, be more vulnerable and engaging with my new friend. I would laugh more. I would focus more. I would be more of me, all of it. That's how to amplify. And I think this is just such a great example of how to celebrate. So let's briefly review why. When I first arranged to go on this business retreat, it didn't include a whale watch. I was sitting at home going, hey, isn't Huntington Beach on the water? I mean, it's got beach in the title of the town. (laughs) So my first action to create more celebration and joy was to check out the whale watching action where I was going for a retreat, go a day early. And then my second step was to invite a stranger to have more fun. My third step was full on amplification when I got that feeling. So you can go from zero to celebrate and look for more ways to do it. And you can recognize a celebration and amplify it to make it even better. 
Now, these are just some examples and ideas, but they illustrate the point that once you prime your celebration muscle, you can easily welcome more celebration goodness into your life. So about my little book, 50 Ways to Celebrate Life After 50, last year I did something to prime my celebration pump. I continued to think about that word amplify and I chose it as my word of the year. Do you do that? It's kind of like, you know, you might do a vision board and and it's it's common to think of a word of the year. So I did it and it was amplify that year. So I'm kind of new to a tradition like this, but I like it. It's a single word, it's easy to remember, and it can inform and shape your goals and vision for the year. It helps you focus. January 2020 started off with a glorious bang. I amplified all kinds of things. I amplified my personal insights about my calendar and schedule and how it needed to change. I challenged myself to amplify my goals for an out-of-town retreat in Palm Desert, California. By looking for more cool ways to go multi-sensory on the lessons, I ended up incorporating feeding giraffes into the theme of reaching forward and up. And I also invited my best friend from high school to be the yoga instructor and teach a short class out in the desert. I was giddy with my plans and how I watched myself and encouraged myself to create them. And I amplified my ability to leverage an opportunity to create even more fun by recognizing that the place I rented for my retreat would be the perfect place to also get together with some of my favorite colleagues for a personal retreat and my whale-watching friend was one of the participants just after my mastermind retreat, the one that I was hosting. So that whole month felt like a celebration to me. Now, for sure, the rest of 2020 didn't go as planned, as you know, and I'm not minimizing that. But identifying that word amplified definitely helped me up the celebration ante over the year. And that's when the idea came to me. Maybe this little idea was book worthy. So that's what I explored. And that's what was hatched. A tiny book about 50 ways to celebrate life after 50, specifically in six areas of your life. And I think these six areas are pretty important, actually, and have become obvious to me now that I've been working with midlife women since 2014. These six areas have come up again and again for me and for many amazing women in the middle. These six areas of your life are the ones that are definitely worthy of more celebration, and they are the following. Your age, your self-care, your passion, your relationships, your professional self, and your empty nest. And as I said earlier, I like to think of the little book as a slice of upbeat, encouraging midlife goodness. I share six short personal stories that help illustrate why I think it's important to celebrate more in these areas of your life. I also talk about why it matters to celebrate in these categories, and I also give you 30 interesting questions to ask yourself to dig a little deeper. There's also room to jot down your thoughts and answers, And of course, there are 50 easy ways to celebrate life after 50. It's a book that's easy to read and easy to apply to your life. And if you're curious enough, your path forward could also include more laughter, insight, commitment, and an open mind to create and allow more happiness. How great is that? I mean, really, ask yourself, if not now, when? What are you waiting for? Why wouldn't you want to celebrate more? This whole celebrate your life thing is really important too because it's so related to common regrets. And you know, we're always trying to regret poof our lives around here on the Women in the Middle podcast. (laughs) Happiness is a common theme in the research about regrets. Sometimes it gets mentioned as not being spontaneous enough or just plain and simple, not having enough fun. It's kind of like you hold yourself back sometimes from doing things you know will make you happier. Can you relate to that? It's a reminder that happiness is a choice. And that's because happiness is a feeling and it's created by a thought. 
So when you create a mindset that is full of the belief that your life is a cause for celebration and that it's a worthy activity for you to prioritize, it starts to become easier for you to also get your head around how important it is to celebrate on purpose. This is an excellent example of something you can think on purpose too, something you can create on purpose. And that's really my challenge to you. I want you to come up with even more ways to celebrate your life after 50. Let my 50 ways only be the beginning. Trust me, celebrating more like this helps you get unstuck, avoid regrets, and embrace what's truly possible for you at any age. And now is the perfect time to turn up the volume and amplify opportunities for more celebration in your life. Again, the name of the book is 50 Ways to Celebrate Life After 50, and your copy is just waiting for you. Actually, it can't wait to get into your hands, your heart, and your head. (laughs) It's kind of a mind, body, and soul reference. So if you're ready to celebrate more, let's do this together. Okay, that's it for this episode. As you know, my focus as a midlife coach is to help you waste less time spinning and feeling stuck about aging, about empty nest, about relationships, about your career, about being more compassionate towards yourself, about all of it. It's time to get excited about your life again. For show notes and links, head over to www.coachwithsusie.com. To buy the book, 50 Ways to Celebrate Life After 50, go to www.50waystocelebrate.com or your favorite online bookstore. Let's do this, ladies. It's time for you to put yourself first, one celebration at a time. Thanks so much for listening, and I'll talk to you next week. 